Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are discussing the Tier 9 Premium German Supercruiser, the Siegfried. Now, the Siegfried is an interesting ship, especially if we take a quick look back at her development cycle. So, the Siegfried was announced alongside the Aguirre, the other Tier 9 German Premium Supercruiser. But, as you can see, the Siegfried is armed with six 15-inch guns, rather than the nine, I believe, 305, 310mm guns that the Aguirre is armed with. They were both announced at the same time, they were also released at the same time, I believe a little over, what, a year and a half, almost two years ago now? God, that seems like that wasn't that long ago. So, when these two ships were in development... Originally, the Aguirre was going to be one of the first all-secondary focused supercruisers in the game, or actually cruisers in the game in, in general. I mean, there, there were cruisers in the past that you could build into the secondaries, and it would work like Hindenburg was surprisingly good at that back in the day. But what's unique about the Aguirre and the Siegfried is that they are armed with the German 128mm secondary guns. What's great about these guns is that these guns get over that 32mm threshold, which is the last major armor threshold in the game. So that means that these guns can pin 32mm of armor, which at tier 10 and tier 9 is what a lot of battleships are coded in, and ships in general are coded in too, which means that your secondaries can pin that and get damage. And that's why that's a big deal. That's a lot of damage coming in where other ships, if they are armed with lesser guns, they can't pin that. That's why uh, the, the IFHE versus fire build debate on secondary ships like the um, Palmer happen so much because they don't have the 128s. So it's an, an eternal argument of do you want to try and build into the pin value of the guns or do you want to build into the fire chance of the guns and hope that the uh, guns set enough fires to make up for the damage but you won't have to worry about that in the Siegfried or the Aguirre because those guns can just base pen 32 millimeters of armor and during testing something quite interesting happened so rather than Aguirre being the secondary ship that honor was then transferred over to the Siegfried and Siegfried was then focused on being the secondary ship so you get Siegfried's 128mm secondaries out to 11.3 kilometers. They were able to pin 32mm of armor and had a decent chance of starting a fire on them. So the two ships get released side by side. Gear gets released as a free XP ship, one of the last free XP ships to ever be released. And Siegfried gets released in the Research Bureau. Now if you're unfamiliar with the Research Bureau, that is supposed to be the end game for veteran players. It's a method of distributing ships where players have to regrind lines in order to get these ships. When you regrind a line, you get rewarded with Research Bureau points, and then you can spend that in the Research Bureau. But to even unlock the Research Bureau, you have to have at least five Tier 10 premiums in the first place, which is a bit. Now, of course, players have been playing this game for years, probably half well over that, and that is the general idea of the Research Bureau. It's supposed to be for players that have done just about everything in the game. Now, for the Siegfried, and for most of the Research Bureau ships, you do have to regrind roughly around 7, 6-ish lines. Which means you have to reset a line and regrind it from Tier 1 to Tier 10 7 or 6 times. You can do it in, well, with what they've been doing recently with giving away Research Bureau points, maybe about 5 or 4. But if you're doing it from, from just start, from 0, it's going to take you around 6 or 7. So you have to do that, again, six or seven times to get this ship. Or if you really want to throw your wallet at it, spend about $300 in converting uh, free XP in order to free XP through the line instantly six or seven times in order to get this ship, which is a very, very costly way of doing it. So either way, it's a incredibly long grind, even by World Worship standards, or it is a huge huge whaling event to get the Siegfried but the Siegfried in my opinion was well worth the grind to get especially when it had these amazing secondaries because now you have a ship with 15 inch guns with decent armor for a cruiser overall it's not the most well armored super cruiser by any stretch of the imagination but the armor on it is quite decent with torpedoes 
hydro, a catapult plane, and these great secondaries. It was a fantastic brawler. A super cruiser that was a great brawler that you could build into the secondaries with. It's fantastic. It was fun. If you guys go, if you guys go back on my channel around the time that Siegfried was being uh, released, you can see all the shenanigans we got into with secondary Siegfrieds. It was a great time. But then, just like that, the ship was changed overnight. Enter the Commander Rework. Now, what the Commander Rework was supposed to do, and what we were told it was supposed to do by Wargaming, was increase build diversity and allow commanders to build into their ships even more specifically than beforehand. What they did was they took the commander's skill tree they split it up to where each class has their own set of commander skills like we have today. And commanders can learn multiple skill trees. Like I have Lucian's on my Siegfried. He has a spec skill tree for battleships, for carriers, for cruisers, and for destroyers. Because I use them on many a premium ship. And that's kind of what they want you to do now. Respect one commander in, in their eyes and what they're probably hoping for you to do. Uh, spec one unique commander like Lucian's. Then you have to move him around to your ship. Which of course either calls commander XP or Blooms to reset. So you want to do that. Spend more money on the game. They make money, of course. And... Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. You get to build more into your specific ship because now each class has their own unique tech tree. Except for the cruisers, they completely removed any secondary skills from the cruiser commander skill tree. Except for one. You have a Fearless Brawler, which decreases the reload time on your secondary battery guns when there's a ship within your detection range. So now, with the Siegfried, you can't spec into the secondaries at all. And then they went back and they changed the secondaries on the Siegfried too, to now where it is literally the same as the Agir. There's no difference between the two ships set of secondaries. It's both the same. Unfortunately. Which is very sad. Very, very, very sad. Now, of course, you can still build the into the modules on the cruiser without the commander skills. It's, it's completely not worth it. So now what they went and did is they completely changed a premium ship that players spent quite some time grinding an absolute mountain of XP to get. Again, resetting a line, grinding it back from 1 to 10. Six to seven times for most players. Or players spent 300 and something dollars converting free XP to get this ship. And Wargaming's initial response was that Siegfried has, quote unquote, other attributes to help it perform well. They said the same thing about the Shigashima 2. And that's all we got for quite some time. So again, think about that. Players spent that amount of time researching this ship, and it changed overnight. Then they gave in a little bit and said, okay, we're going to look at potentially doing something for secondary cruisers. Well, what have they done since then? Well, they released the Napoli, which has the best secondaries in the game based on accuracy. It, it has the stock best secondaries in the game because they gave it that. There's no way you can really build into it. You can build into the modules again, which does, of course, help it. But stock Napoli secondaries are incredibly accurate, even without the modules equipped. Because that's how they have to do secondary cruisers now. And it's been a full year since this has happened to the Siegfried. Now, I'm not expecting anything to happen, obviously, within the next two or three patches, given what's going on with the studio situation, where they are shuttering the uh, wargaming studios in Russia and Belarus. So, yeah, that's reasonable not to anticipate anything to happen in the next couple of patches. But, come on, wargaming. You told us you would do something for the secondary cruisers, but... Here we are, a full year later, and nothing's been done or mentioned much since then. And again, this is a ship that, again, players spent potentially months or hundreds of dollars grinding to get that changed overnight. Now, what they said is true, though. The ship does have other attributes to help it perform well, and it still does perform well. I mean, it's got 
15 inch guns on a cruiser with 2.05 sigma with battle cruiser dispersion which look at the dispersion i'm getting even sailing through this thunderstorm front on um well we should have been watching the first match should have been a uh epicenter match and i'm sorry for the matches in the background i w i was just getting handed like epicenter standard battle or i did get a couple domination battles that were complete rollovers one way or the other so yeah matchmaking just didn't like me when i went to record this background footage but you guys can see the ship does have very accurate guns they are 15 inch guns the armor hasn't changed at all either it is still pretty decent for protecting the ship the ship's decently maneuverable too it's a very maneuverable super cruiser it turns on a flip and dime which is great and she still has her torpedoes and yes you still can get in there and brawl but it's just not the same without the the secondaries you don't have that additional boost to your damage going in addition to the torpedoes and the 15 inch guns as well so it's still a massive disappointment i'm still very upset that they changed what was one of my favorite ships in the game and they did the exact opposite of what they said they were supposed to do in the commander rework this didn't increase build diversity especially in the siegfried's case you have one build that works now which is long range sniper siegfried that's all you got now. You went from having two viable builds on the ship to having one. That happened with a lot of ships too. So, here we are. A year later from that change, nothing's really happened with the Siegfried. And while it is true that the ship probably is performing better in this build, in this playstyle with the current meta of the game, it doesn't change the fact that they overnight changed a ship that players either grinded weeks or months away to get, or spent hundreds of dollars to get, just overnight with very little warning and no type of compensation for that because again they fundamentally change the way that the ship plays and while it's true they do reserve the right to do that and you agree to that in the eula that doesn't change the fact that it's a pretty scummy thing to do in my mind but that is my two cents on the ship just wanted to give you guys an update on that and a reminder that they haven't done much about it again i don't think anything's going to happen very soon with the, with the big move that they're having out of Russia and Belarus, but after that war game, after you get settled down, we would like to hear about where you're at with these secondary sh cruisers and getting them back to us. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. One way to 35,000 subs. And I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.